Good evening, everyone. My name is Nancy Krebs, and I am an actor, singer, songwriter, teacher, and just one of the countless numbers, the legions of students who have passed through the door into Dr. Lou L. Rod's classroom during the many years that she has been teaching. I was one of her students while she was at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, before she came here to Cal State L.A., I think I can probably count on the fingers of one hand the number of people who have made such an impact in my life that it was transformed. I consider Lou Elrod as one of those on the countable fingers. I was a graduate student searching for a private voice teacher, and I was lucky enough to find her. She not only fashioned the singing voice that I have, but also my teaching style, which is based on hers. She became not only my teacher, but also my mentor, and a friend for life. I would never presume to think that all of us who have passed through her door would have the same story, but there have to be probably some common threads running throughout most of our stories. One such thread would be that if you have been a student of Lou's, you would agree that she is a force, a force of nature that has to be reckoned with, a force of nature that will have its way with you. I can remember so many times in some restaurant or cafe where there was a piano being played in the center of the room with an open mic. She would say, get up there and sing a song. I'd say, no, no, please, I'm not ready. No, no, go ahead, sing a song. Everybody else is doing it. It's time for you to sing. And before I knew it, she would be up there whispering something into the pianist's ear, and I'd hear my name announced as the next singer. Well, what am I going to do? Of course, I'm going to sing. Because when Dr. Elrod feels it's time for you to be showcased, by God, you will be showcased. And I'm sure I'm not alone. I'm sure there are others who have similar experiences. Which leads me to the next thread. She believed, and always will believe, in her students. She is a great advocate of our talents and abilities. That's why she can push us a little further and encourage us to take risks when we would feel much more comfortable not taking such a risk. And we have found that she loves teaching. To her, teaching is performance. She has inspired countless individuals to become teachers themselves, even when that wasn't their original plan. I can attest to that. She has been a teacher of teachers. And as a performer herself, she is a role model for her performance students as well. She is a consummate artist in everything she does. She has blazed a trail for all of us ever since her early days teaching in a little elementary school in rural Georgia. The children were so excited when they spied her car coming down the driveway to their school that the teachers would have to release them from class so they could run out and escort their beloved music teacher into the building. She still has that effect. And she still blazes a trail, inspiring each new class that walks through her door, student after student, to successfully dream a dream, take a flight of fancy, hone and perfect his or her skills so that collectively they can make music of every kind. So, Lou, I know I speak for myself, and I hope I speak in some small way for all of us whose lives have been touched by your teaching. When I sing, we were young, in a hurry, not sure where we were going. We were young, with some promise, but there was so much that we didn't know. Then you blew into our lives, and you taught us how to strive. You gave us direction You showed us the way to go You lassoed the moon You harnessed the sun in us You charted a path Down which we could run You fueled a dream in every soul
and so giving You knew just where you were going Full of love, full of promise There was so much you wanted to do So you blew into our lives And you shared with us your drive Your quest for perfection You gave us direction So much we owe to Disillusion there, but I can dream, can't I? Can't I adore you? Although we are oceans apart, I can't make you. But I can dream, can't I?
Chestnut trees, the wishing well. I'll be seeing you in every lovely summer's day, in everything that's light and gay. I'll always think of you. I'll find you in the morning sun, and when the night is new, I'll be looking at the moon, but I'll be seeing. Making a movie, I think it's. I don't know if I'm making a movie. Am I making a movie, honey? <laughs> okay, blow your blow your things, Auntie. You gotta blow your thing. Oh, she, that's all she can do. Though. I'm pleased. Really she doesn't need to blow. It's okay. She's okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Honey, I am so tired. I was at the airport in Los Angeles, and I asked them if they could send one of my bags to Miami and one to Chicago and one to New York, and they said, no, we couldn't do that. I said, well, you did it last time. I said, you know what? I go to Santa Anita Racetrack over there, and I bet on a horse the other day. That horse was so good, it took eight horses to beat it. <laughs> I come from a real nice family. You know, my mother and father were in the hiring steel business. My mother hired in my father. Oh. <laughs> and my, my, uh, it's bomb my bomb brother check. sort of took after our father. He, he steals, but you know, <laughs> you know, he's better now though than he used to be. He only steals things now that start with A. A watch, A ring. A. <laughs> and my sister, she does not believe in gambling at all. I'm sort of a gambler. She doesn't believe. In fact, took her to the casino one time. She sat down at the change machine and sat there for two hours, and she was thrilled to death because she came out even. <laughs> I joined the gym recently because I wanted to get into shape. And then I got over there and I found out that round is a shape. <laughs> I don't know if you looked at any old man's legs lately, but they don't have any hair on them. <laughs> and the reason is they wear those long underwear, you know. And the uh, hair, in order to grow, has to have light, you know. And you will notice the, uh, uh, the hair is coming out their ears. <laughs> right and it had water in the carburetor. He said, where is the car? I said, it's down in the lake. <laughs> Problem is when you get old, you know, you have to start going to the doctor. I went to the doctor, told him I had a ringing in my ear. He said, don't answer it. <laughs> but I asked my husband, you know, I asked my husband, I said, you want to go upstairs and make love? He said, well, we can't do both. <laughs> now, so far, we have what appears to me to be a series of victimless crimes. What about the toe? What about the fucking toe? Excuse me, sir. Could you please keep your voices down? This is a family restaurant. Oh, please, dear. For your information, the Supreme Court has roundly rejected on, prior restraint. This is not a First Amendment thing, sir, man. If you don't calm down, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Lady, I got buddies who died face down in the muck so that you and I could enjoy this family restaurant. All right, I'm out of here. Hey, dude, don't go away, man. Come on, this affects all of us, man. Our basic freedoms. I'm staying. I'm finishing my coffee. Enjoying my coffee.